I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America as an expat and as an immigrant. Today, we're going to be doing another in our series of helping to build expat skills and tools to help you be successful at starting your own journey to move abroad, relocate, and become an expat yourself. This is an important set of the videos that we're putting together because we think it's meaningful uh, to help provide a free set of skills so that you don't have to go pay anyone for something that may be simply a sales pitch. Today, we're going to be talking about the expat feedback loop. Now, this is not some negative conspiracy that people are putting together as expats to try to mislead you. Not at all. This is simply the natural result of expats asking expats for other advice and expats becoming influencers, says the expat influencer, and the dangers that naturally arise from that feedback cycle as they do that. So, what is it? How does it work? How do you protect yourself from it? Well, those are great questions, so we're going to answer right after the bump. Before we get into anything else, what is the expat feedback loop? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So when expats move abroad, let's take me for example. I moved to Nicaragua a number of years ago. And when I did so, I decided to become an influencer. That's not exactly the chain of events, but you can imagine something like that happening. In reality, I've been an influencer for 20 years in just other spaces, and I moved a lot of places other than Nicaragua in the past, but Nicaragua was my permanent home. But play along. So I moved to Nicaragua and I want to be an influencer because living in Nicaragua gives me a lot of things to share all of a sudden. So new expats are especially prone to desiring to be active on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you name it, because we have something really interesting going on in our lives and other people tend to find it really interesting compared to the normal things that we have going on. As amazing as pictures of our dogs and cats are, not that many people are actually that interested in them, which is weird, I know, because that's what I want to see from everyone, but they're definitely more interesting than pictures of people's kids. There's levels to these things. Anyway, in a situation like mine, I'm able to show off beautiful Nicaragua, which is a country people don't tend to know very much. People are interested. Does this apply to me? Could I do something like this? And of course, my dogs sometimes run around in the background, which takes it up another level as well. It's not just travel. It's not just being an expat. It's also my dogs. Okay, so as this happens, a bunch of people will watch this. Well, if you're lucky, a bunch of people will watch. In reality, it's not that many, but I really appreciate my viewers. Thank you. And as you do this, you start to say, well, this is a location that one, now I know something about. So there's a chance you're going to become interested in it. Not because the place that I show or anyone shows is going to be that interesting. It's that it's what you have access to. So you will only potentially become interested in the places that someone exposes to you. So because I'm exposing Nicaragua, my audience has a natural heightened tendency to find Nicaragua interesting. There's already a reason to be interested in Nicaragua because Nicaragua is a really interesting place, but that has its own momentum. This is a momentum higher than that. This is where you're specifically seeing my view of it, and that makes it more interesting than Nicaragua is on its own. Now, this is true for every place you're watching. It's not unique to me, but it's an important thing to understand. So you are part of this audience. You're being interested in things that you're seeing. If you go watch a show about Bolivia, you will also say, ooh, I am now extra interested in Bolivia over the normal rate that Bolivia would interest me on its own because I've now seen it and I have access to some information. So that's the first piece. You have a heightened level of interest. You also have a heightened level of interest of becoming an expat because you're also getting expat information. You get that information of these two things combined. And so that gives you a level of comfort. Oh, here's a person who has successfully become an expat in this country in which I have a heightened level of interest. And I'm now thinking about being an expat. Pat. Put that all together, and this place, in my example, Nicaragua, looks really interesting to you for lots of good reasons, but also because you have a potential level of comfort knowing that you can reach out to me, that I'm going to be making more material, that you're seeing it in more or less real time. As least all these things starts making you say, this is not just a place I'm interested in, and not only am I interested in being an expat, but I feel comfortable that I could probably recreate the path that Scott did and move to this place. And then you're probably going to seek out another YouTuber so you can get another opinion on the place. But of course, any 
anyone you're going to see is going to be a successful expat living here because who else is there to make the shows? Of course, travelers do, but that's, that's different material. And then you say, wow, here's reinforcement and it looks even more interesting and I feel even more comfort and it snowballs. Then you move down and you have the same feeling that I did. Wow, I really want to share my life with my family, so I'm going to take videos of this beautiful place that I'm living in and I'm going to show off how awesome it is being an expat, being a digital nomad, whatever and the cycle starts again. Now, in places like Nicaragua, this happens very little because this is not an expat destination, but we do see my channel making a lot of more additional people interested in coming to Nicaragua than would normally do so on their own if they were just researching the country. Now, I do think that it's an amazing choice, and you do know that I tried a lot of different countries, so this is one that I chose while breaking the expat loop, feedback loop, for myself, but you should be aware of this feedback loop when you're looking at other places. Now, some places get a lot of expats, either because uh, their home countries have pushed them there, they have really good visa uh, policies, but mostly it's just historical. When I was a kid, a lot of the generation before mine, or the older boomers, had a tendency to go to places like Spain and France and Italy, Greece and Mexico. These were the feedback loop locations of the previous generation. It is where their parents had started going when they were uh, older, they had information on it, they were safe and up and coming places at the time, they were very cost effective, they made a lot of sense when the process started. Over time, lots and lots of people went there and their cost of living went through the roof, they become uh, inaccessible, but they also became loaded with expats who had moved there took over a lot of communities and actually created a lot of problems. There's a reason why people hate tourists in Barcelona. There's just too many of them. There's a happy level where it's nice to have some tourists because they're helping your economy. And there's an unhappy level where you no longer feel comfortable in the place where you were born. So we got to find a spot that makes everybody happy as best as possible when we're looking at these kinds of things. So over time, because these traditional places became overrun with tourists and their cost of livings went up, then new places had to be found. And there are well well-known new places. Some examples that have come up recently are Thailand, Costa Rica, and Ecuador. Now, these countries are facing a similar problem. They are starting to be overrun with expats because a new generation of expats started going there, and Mexico still has a lot of this going on, and they make a lot of material. And now, because of social media, we're able to get a much more uh, rapid and tight feedback loop, so this is really exploding. Suddenly, those countries that I mentioned have unbelievable numbers of people making content and consuming their content, and the loop just starts going like wild. Suddenly, when people start talking about becoming an expat, it's kind of like the backpacker trail. When you say, I'm going to be a backpacker, everyone knows you're going to do one of a couple standard trails around the world. You're not going to go backpacking and like really go on an adventure. You're going to take a basically virtual tour where you get onto a trail and follow all the other backpackers to all the same hostels, all the same cities, to all the same activities, and you're basically on a class trip. Well, the same thing has happened with expats. If you say you're going to become an expat, there's a set number of countries, so we're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to be going to one of those. If you end up in Angola or Zambia or uh, Laos, then it's going to be a little bit surprising. But if you end up in Thailand or Ecuador, it is not at all. You can go out and find millions and millions of people, that's probably an exaggeration, who are making material specifically for those countries. And you can see exactly what their budgets are, exactly where they rent. And when you get there, there's like all these mechanisms in place for you, and it does make things relatively easy easy, but with ease comes expense. So you move into these places, you're much more likely to be shuffled off to some level of enclave because you're going to be around other tourists. There's going to be apartments and houses and stuff built just for you or available really uh, uh, for your accommodations. Like it's just going to feel very comfortable and it's going to make a lot of expats say, well, that's what I want to do. And those places remain decently popular because of them, but they are, as Nomad Capitalist calls them, legacy brands to some degree, not legacy brands like the US and Canada. Those are seriously legacy brands. But Ecuador and Mexico and Thailand are on the verge of becoming legacy brands in the expat world in that they are saturated markets. They're great places and there's nothing wrong with them and they will eventually fade and eventually they will return almost certainly once the expats leave. And that tends to be what happens. People move in droves, the cost of living moves up. Eventually the reason that people went there often because it was inexpensive and for some because it was out of the way and not where all the other tourists and expats were, then they find that it's no longer meeting their needs and they move on to the next place. 
place. But if they're following the feedback loop, they'll simply move to the next place that's popular. They'll hear from their friends. Ooh, I heard about Belize. Everyone's talking about Belize. Well, if everyone's talking about it, that must be the place to go. In reality, if everyone's talking about it, it's not the place to go. You want to go where people aren't talking. You don't want to go to someplace that's completely crazy. Don't move to Egypt in the middle of a war. Don't move to Syria while they're occupied. Like, be rational. But there's a ton of countries around the world that people aren't talking about at all that are safe and cheap and nice. And you could be one of basically no uh, expats that are there at all. I had to move to get away from a baby bird that was on the ground. I don't want to distract it or keep its parents from getting to it. It's just hopping around in the grass. I think it's learning how to fly and is stunned for the minute. Seems okay, just on the ground and vulnerable. So I want to give him space. Anyway, so... So the feedback loops tend to get people interested and bring them to the same locations as everyone else. This is a danger because a lot of the reasons that you're interested in these locations is low cost, high safety, and getting away from people. Not everyone. Now, if you're looking for enclave living, which is legitimate, and a lot of potential expats are looking for enclave living, especially on their first attempt at becoming an expat, which I generally don't recommend. If it's something you are not looking for long term, don't do it as an interim step. But if what you want is to always be in an enclave, you're never looking to experience other cultures as a point of integration, and you're always looking to simply move abroad and get the benefits of the polity of, of another country, of getting their laws and their weather and their cost of living, then by all means, just move to an enclave and, and that's what you're going to do. But if it's not your end goal, then don't make it an interim goal. I think that's a bad way to go. You will not gain the skills that you need and you'll often simply create other problems. It could work, but I don't recommend it. But if you are generally looking for all these benefits and you're looking for the best fit for you, the best combination of things, you don't necessarily want to avoid the super popular locations. They are popular for a reason, and they do have infrastructures that other places don't have. Going to a Costa Rica, an Ecuador, a Thailand can be fantastic, and a lot of people do it and are very, very happy. However, the majority of people that do it don't evaluate other places. People who are aware of the feedback loop, people who are aware of these popular hotspots, generally either go to them because they simply want to follow the crowd and don't feel comfortable doing anything that they perceive as being outside of the mainstream, or they do so without doing their research and they kind of get swept along. And this goes along with our idea of being an intentional expat. Don't just become unintentional and accidentally end up being an expat. That is a great way to be unhappy long-term. Bad things will probably come of that. So we recommend heavily not allowing that to happen. So that that's often what you find there. So you generally get a lot of negatives. That's where you get a lot of scams being run. That's where costs go up very quickly because people are trying to buy their way out of problems. They have problems that other places don't have. And anyone who's looking at making money off of expats, that's where they're going to be. The advantages to going to a place like Nicaragua or Angola is that there really aren't any expats. And so when you go there, you're an anomaly. There isn't an infrastructure trying to take advantage of you because it wouldn't make any sense. They'd have been waiting in the hopes that maybe you'd show up someday when they had no reason to expect you to. Doesn't work that way. So that is a general thing that I recommend. If you don't want to be in an enclave, don't put yourself on a path like you're going to be on an enclave. So a place like Costa Rica, it's great for enclave living because basically everyone who's in Costa Rica is on that mental pathway. It is extremely rare. They do exist, but it is extremely rare that someone has moved to Costa Rica after having researched lots of options, after being comfortable with what else is out there, after understanding the cost and safety and access to things, and still say, oh, and I, even though I have all these uh, abilities and I'm knowledgeable about all these places, but I'm still going to go to this high cost location surrounded by other tourists, uh, other expats, and then I'm going to try to separate myself out and find a place that's more genuine and integrate and, and try to get over all the Costa Ricans who think that I'm always going to be this enclave kind of thing. Absolutely, there's a few people who do that. Some people just love Costa Rica. Some people put up with those things. Some people have figured out how to make it cheap and safe. Some people have figured out how to integrate, but they're a real exception going at that as a goal. I mean, extremely difficult if that's what your end goals are. One of the big reasons we do like places like Costa Rica is that all the expats have created a really big airport infrastructure, and so it has one of the best places to fly from in all of North America. The costs are just insanely low and really convenient in a small airport that you would never guess can go all over the world really easily. So there are certain advantages to it, absolutely. So don't 100% rule out those locations. Maybe they still work for you, but go into it with a very careful knowledge of one being with intent, right? Don't be unintentional. And two, 
be aware of the feedback loop and know that you're going to be getting so much material, you're going to be getting such a sales pitch, whether it's an intentional sales pitch, and those places will have a ton of that. These are the locations where people are selling relocation and expat services, especially Costa Rica and Ecuador. It is everywhere. If you look at those places, nearly every channel you're going to stumble on is someone who's trying to get you interested, and then sell you a relocation package service of some sort. And while that's not incredibly bad all of the time, it's not great. It means that the information you're getting is in a sales mode and not in an honest recommendations mode. So while it may be honest, its underpinnings are not so much. There's a conflict of interest there. And so that's something you have to be very aware of. But if you're not having those things happen, if you're going to a place that's outside the feedback loop, the chances that you're going to get those kinds of things still absolutely exist. I know big channels from Paraguay, absolutely just out to do a sales thing. They'll say anything to get your money. So always be aware that those things are out there. But if you're going to out of the way locations that have uh, very, very few people who are expatting and they know that there isn't some huge influx for them to make money off of, you're much more likely to get honest assessments and honest views of things. And that will generally help you more. But it doesn't mean you should avoid the other places. Just be aware of what you're seeing. Always look with a critical eye. Is someone trying to sell me something or sell me on something? And everyone is, of course. The thing that you want is healthy bias. Healthy bias is this person really likes this thing and they're going to share it with you because they're excited about the product. I really like my new iPhone. I want to tell you about it. Look at the photos I'm taking with it. I'm so excited because I have this iPhone. If that's what's motivating them, they're just happy with the photos coming off their new phone. Excellent. That's a great bias. They're still biased, but that's the bias you look for. If someone says, oh, this vendor paid me to tell you about this product that I wouldn't tell you about on my own, but I've been paid to act like I would, that's a bad bias. That's not getting someone's honest opinion. You're getting something else and not necessarily knowing what it is. And even if you do know what it is, it's not necessarily healthy because even if you allow knowing to uh, be told about something that a sales pitch is coming to you, eventually those sales pitches will wear you down even if you're aware of them. That's a really important thing to know. I always recommend go read the book, Predictably Irrational. It will help you understand the world and why you think the way that you do. And the more you think you don't do it, definitely the more likely you do. Anyway, Thanks for joining me. Make sure you're thinking about the feedback loop and everything you're doing whenever you're looking at material about relocation. How are other expats, we have fireworks going on like crazy, uh, uh, feeding you information? Is it because there's just all these people, one going because another one went, and so it's a, a you know self-fulfilling prophecy of, of course, all these people went to this location. No one did their research. They all just followed each other. Do you want to be with a whole horde of people who just followed each other, and they're all feeding off of each other, and no one's doing their own research? Or do you want to be around people who are doing their own research? Different people want different things. Just make sure you're being intentful and make that decision yourself. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.